Hello everybody. This is the next project that I'm going to be working on. This is a sort of a pocketbook slash handbag almost suitcase. Um, give you a little walkthrough. I'm not going to record the entire thing. I'll record the steps because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me sew for an hour or two. But I'll go through all the pieces that I've got and what all I used to make it. So let's get started. Here the pink portion. This is the actual body part of the bag. And this white strip across the front here is going to be a pocket that's going to be sewed on. And I'm going to sew off lines to make individual pockets. This strip here is going to be the side pieces. And this right here, this white strip, is the bottom piece. Each section, which is going to be a front, a back, each side, and one bottom piece, is all going to be constructed with one piece of fabric, one piece of canvas, and this is cloth fabric, uh, canvas, just for the durability, and then an inner piece of either linen or cotton. The only exception to that is the pocket itself. Pocket itself is just the cotton and the well, two pieces of cotton or the cotton and linen. Um, but like you see here, the cotton, the canvas, and then the inside, as well as the side pieces, the cotton, canvas, and the inner piece. Um, all the other ones I've made, I've used the same material to make the handles. So this time I'm going a little different using pre-made handles. That's because that's what my wife picked out. So these right here. And they have rings on the end of them so to attach them to the handbag. I have to use... Uh, I call them grommets, I hear it calls them eyelet kits, or an eyelet kit, which has the stamper, which is the long piece here, and then one of the rings right here, this one right here, is the anvil part that you set down, and then you use a hammer to attach it to wherever you need it in the fabric. So I'm going to pause here, get everything set up, and then start walking through it. Alrighty. Okay, here I'm getting ready to put my first piece together, which I'm um, choosing to do the pocket piece. Um, I didn't go over this in the first section, but the dimensions that I did are for the front and the back is 22 inches across and 16 inches deep. Excuse me. On the side pieces, I have six inches across and 16 deep. On the bottom is six inches deep or wide eventually and 22 inches across. And this is the extra pieces they match to the bottom. This is the front pocket and it's 22 by six. So for the pocket piece, I'm going to try to get all the seams to um, where I don't have to put binding or anything across the top and kind of finish it out. I'm going to try to make it have a finished look from sewing just because of the thickness of the materials. So I'm going to start by turning the print side in and matching up my edges and sewing them all together. So I'll match my corners up. And here we go. For the inside. 
sorry. Trying to sew as close to the edge as I can so I have a nice clean seam. And I always backstitch when I start and stop a stitch. <coughs> press that before I try to attach it to the rest of it. Now for now I'm only going to sew this one long side because when I go to place it together I'll be sewing the sides and the edges together again anyway. So I'm just going to do it all in one shot. And by pressing this out it will give it a nice crisp seam. For the next part, I'll be sewing together a piece of the outside fabric, a piece of the canvas, and a piece of the inner material. So I'm going to just sew all those together, and then I'll come back and show you where I'm at. Anything that I do out of the ordinary, I'll uh, stop where I'm at and try to record that process for you. But for the most part, it's all going to be pretty straightforward stitching, so um, yeah, I'll leave it at that and come back where I need to. Okay, so a lesson I just learned was when you're putting your materials together for your side pieces, and I'm pretty sure it'll carry through for the rest of the pieces, if you're going to invert the outside piece to where your print side is showing, but you want the so seam like I did earlier for the pocket piece like this you're going to have to change the order that you layer your fabric so you have your print side right here for your outside piece is going to face the inside piece the black fabric that I have here and your canvas piece will be on the bottom. And what you'll do after that is you're only gonna sew the top portion together, just like you did on the pocket. And the side and the bottom pieces will be sewed together as it's being assembled. Um, I end up having to rip a stitch out just now from learning that. There's probably people out there that's been sewing their whole life that could have said, hey, knucklehead if you're doing it backwards but some of us we have to learn the hard way so that was a little tidbit I felt like sharing so back to it alrighty I have all my pieces sewed together right now and I'm just going to go through and show you how I got everything together uh, here's my top seam and that's how the very top of the purse the edge of it is going to look 
and that's the front and the back. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're sewing these together, I know I told you if you want to invert your pieces, you'd have to change your lineup on the way you layer your fabric. Another thing is, like ours has logo written on it or the lettering printed into it. So if you want that to actually show up in the right direction, make sure you have that to the top where your seam is. So that's the front and the back. Here are the side pieces and they all been pressed. And for the bottom, I didn't invert anything. I just straight sewed it together. So the layering on this was print. And if I get in close enough, you can see canvas and then the black inner layer there. Um, and you can see I used the black thread and just sewed it very close as I could all the way around the edge. So when I actually go to put it together, I can overlap without actually going right back into my stitch. And then here's the front pocket and the edge sewed on it and it has no canvas just to keep down on the thickness of everything. So the next thing I'm going to do is where the material is still, it's sewed together but it's still loose. I do this on all my projects that, well so far uh, purses and baby blankets. But I'm going to go through and sew the diamond stitches into the fabric. It adds a little decorative touch but it also helps keep all the layers of fabric together so they won't bunch up and crease together and makes it look a little bit more professional. So that's a quick glance of all the pieces that I have together. So it's actually come together fairly quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my diamond stitches in and then I'll come back to you. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, um, for anybody that was wondering how I did the cross marks in my fabric, what I have is two rulers, my fabric, and there are fabric marking pencils, which would probably show up better, but I'm just using a regular number two pencil. So what I'm doing is I take and put one into my yardstick and get it even with one corner and run it across to the diagonal corner. And all of my marks, I try to make them roughly four inches apart. So I take and line up my second ruler underneath the first one and I line it up with the four inch mark. And I just take from there and draw my mark across. And just follow the top of the bottom ruler. And then continue on at four inch intervals. So I'll move down to the eight. Hold down, try to make sure it's as straight as possible. It's decorative work and as dark as some of the print is on here, it won't show up a whole lot, but it will show up. And it does help to hold all the fabric pieces together like I was saying earlier. So I just continue on all the way down. to the 16 the 20 and it doesn't really have to be super dark just enough to where when you have it up under the light of your sewing machine here that you can actually kind of somewhat see the line and once you wash it, the lines will go away. Okay, so those are all my lines in one direction. But what I'm going to do is turn my rulers. Now I started at 
the edge is closest to you, which is my top, which is going to be the top of the bag. And I'm going to the other side of the top, placing the corner, and then running it diagonally again, and doing the exact same thing at four inch intervals. If you're working on a smaller piece, then you may want to go down to two to three inches. If you're working on something larger, you may want to go up to about five. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out my marks. Uh, one thing I saw or found out that seems to work easier when you're actually sewing your decorative lines in. This top edge is the only thing that's sewed together right now. The rest of these are still open. So if you start with your top edge and feed that into the machine first, then it kind of, if you have any wrinkles or any moving, of the fabric going on it's going to push everything out to the edge instead of bunching up to where it's already sewed together. So we'll finish the lines out here. darker because of the print that we've chosen. I have to go over it a few times with the pencil just to make it show up. But as long as you get your lines fairly straight, everything will be alright. So I'll get this one last mark in. And those are all my lines, which on the camera you probably can't see what it looks like. But I've already done and completed the first section, or the one of the sides. And I'll get as close as I can, see if you can actually see them. Let's see if I can get in the light there a little bit. But you can kind of see the diamond pattern that it gives kind of blends in with the rest of the the print on there but it does hold everything together so I thought that was something that should be expressed so continuing on to the next section all right I have all my pieces sewed together I have all my decorative stitching done to hold everything in place now we're to the assembly portion. Uh, this part I will try to film the whole thing so that you see how it's put together and see everything as it is from this point to finish. <coughs> um, if anything should happen like a thread breaks or run out of a bobbin which I really doubt because I just replaced it. Anything like that, anything like that happens, I'll edit it out and fast forward or whatever, so you don't have to sit there and watch through that. A um, little tidbit of information: you will probably go through about two bobbins worth of thread, so just keep that in the back of your mind. You may want to pre-spool your two bobbins. So let's get started here. I'm going to start with the front portion so I can go ahead and get the pocket sewed in. So I have the pocket here. Stop. Going on the front. And I need my side piece, or one of my side pieces. And I will be sewing this inside out so that I have clean edges on the outside. And I do like sewing all my side pieces 
all my front, back, and my two sides together. I like saving the bottom piece for last. Okay. <coughs> all right, so let's make sure all this happens and see if I can do it without messing up any. Try to keep everything as lined up and straight as possible. Get a few stitches in. And then back stitch. Kind of like that down. And just try to take it slow and easy. Get good even stitches. Okay, I'm just now getting to the pocket area, so this is getting to be some pretty thick material. So I'm going to try to take it a little bit slower. I'm trying to keep good tight to tight stitches. I've got my tension set on about four, and I have my thread width pretty close together. So I want this to be as strong and sturdy as possible. Right, at the edge, I'm going to back stitch and stitch back. Actually, no. See, I was getting ready to catch a mistake on the video. Pull my needle out. I was getting ready to sew my side to the front, and that won't work. Uh -huh. All right. Go to the other side. Make sure my pocket's straight. Grab my other side piece. Line it up. Try to keep everything as straight and square as possible. straight and pull everything out it's always good practice when you're working always put your needle in your work once you get it where you need it
Looks like everything's pretty straight. Two stitches forward. Back stitch to lie down. Check everything. Make sure I get my pocket in there. My edge. It'd be real bad to start sewing and miss the edge of my pocket and then have to go back and redo it because it's not attached. If you're trying to do this on a smaller sewing machine, this probably won't work. Unless you just have a little monster of a machine. Edge, a back stitch, one L. And it is good to use a heavy duty thread because this is fairly thick material. It wouldn't be all that great to have good material and then have your stitches pop apart. So now to get the front piece on, or I guess technically the back piece. I'll go ahead and start with this side. So I'll just match my two edges together. As you saw, I opened everything up. And I'm keeping right sides together, so this is the right side of the side piece. Line everything up and run her through. Right, just one final check. Take your time, don't rush through it. When you rush through things, it makes it look bad. Stitches on the end. 
Now before I go to the other side and stitch it down, what I want to do is divide this front pocket. And I think I'm going to divide it into thirds. So grab my ruler. And I was going to get a quick rough measurement. Measures 21 inches across. So I'm going to make my marks at 7 inch intervals. So 7 and 14. So I'll just use the edge here. I'll make the marks on both sides so I try to get it pretty straight. I could have done these marks ahead of time, but I didn't. I wanted to make them evenly spaced for the way it was actually going to appear versus evenly spaced on just a piece of fabric sewed together. So put this in here. And I'm not going the entire distance from the top to the bottom, I'm just doing the width of the pocket itself. So a couple stitches. I'll back stitch these now. Probably is not necessary, but it makes me feel better. Anytime you're working with this much fabric and layers, the best thing you can possibly do is to take your time and make sure everything stays as straight and even as possible. Because I've had this trouble, or I've had that trouble on doing quilts before, or baby blankets, especially big ones. When you get them together, and then they start to bunch up when you're doing your uh, designs in it. And then once it starts to bunch, especially with these tight stitches like I like using, there is no coming back from that. You're stuck with something that just has bunched material in it and it doesn't look good at all. Stitches, back stitch. been better if I'd done this before I attached the other side. But to be honest, I just forgot about it. So open 
open this up. And now I have three individual pockets in the front. So I continue sewing my sides together. And I always sew from the top of my project to the bottom. It might not make much of a difference, that's just a preference. I'm not very professional with this, I just kind of do things and wing it as it comes along. We just have to get our bottom sewed on. And this always seems to be the fun part. And when I say that, I'm being extremely sarcastic. some of these seams out of the bottom. Just to keep this from being so thick. So when you're sewing this together, I'd recommend leaving roughly three quarters of an inch to maybe even an inch on the bottom edge just to facilitate putting the bottom piece on. See, anybody gets to watch this gets to learn from my mistakes. So you can watch this and spend 15 or 20 minutes watching and learn what took me 30 minutes to learn. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side as well. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll probably speed this portion up just to save you some time. Alright, so I re released some of the edges here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm actually going to start with one of the smaller sides. So that'll help hold my work in place as I go through. And I would say leave a, a three quarter inch gap on your releases here. Just to make life a little easier. Now what I'm doing now it's in order to sew this long edge straight what I'm having to do is the side piece that I just sewed together I'm having to fold it a 45 and when I do it lines up my corners so that I can sew them straight Now I have a straight edge. And what that does is where I released this corner earlier, it allows me to go right back over and sew across it so that when I get finished and fold the bag right side out, this corner will actually be sealed back the way it should be. And it also keeps it from bunching up so much here in the corner. Got that corner, I can kind of fold the rest of this in. And finish my line.
speed is very nice and smooth. sure somebody's going to watch this video and they're going to sit there and scream at their computer screen. No, that's not the way you do that. No, there's a better way. Well, that's the way that I do things. So, it works for me. And it gets the job done. But by all means, if there is a better way of doing this, please let me know. last edge and this is the edge with the pocket on it so this will be our thickest edge so make double sure that as you sew it together you get that very bottom edge of the pocket Five fold on this side now so I can kind of keep my one edge straight. Okay. And just make sure you get all my edges lined up.
Now it's time for the semi moment of truth. I see a portion that I missed, so I'm going to go back and hit that real quick. Try now for the moment of truth. Let's see if I have any more holes. I don't see any. But the first thing I'm going to do is just trim down the corners here a little bit so I can get the corners to actually fold out the way they should. And be careful not to cut where you sewed. Got scraps to the side. See what we got here. Reach in and poke all the corners out. Make sure that they're all good and sturdy. So it in there good. All right, all the corners came out perfect. So here we have almost an arm deep bag. with all three pockets firmly attached in the front. All the sides together. And all the corners attached good. So the only thing we have left to do is I have to place four grommets, two in the front, I don't know if you can see that or not, two in the front and two in the exact same spot on the reverse side and then we have to attach the pre-made handles that we got. Um, I've never done that before so I'm going to learn how to do that right now. Uh, okay, so measuring stick. I think a measuring stick so I can get proper placement 
and I'll use a seam ripper to get my hole started because I know you have to put a hole in the material that is big enough for the grommet and I need to make sure I don't place them too deep that the ring won't fit properly so I'm going to place this handle here and just by eyeballing I would say maybe four inches from either side and I wanted to make sure the hole only goes down roughly half the ring between half and two-thirds so these are one inch rings so at most three quarters of an inch so I'll measure four inches from the edge and make a mark and that's kind of in a dark area so I have to mark it kind of dark so I can make sure I see it really good okay and then four inches from this side right, we're down on Mr. Sewing Machine make some room From this side, and this right here, which is in the pink, so that'll be nice. And I'm going to go for the three quarters of an inch. where those two lines intersect is where I want the center of my eyelet. Well, I call them grommets, but on here they're called eyelets. I want the center of that to be where these two lines cross. So I'm going to make all my marks, uh, place my holes in the material, and go ahead and install these. And then I'll come back after that. But before I leave, I know you've been hearing giggling and talking in the background. And it's not just a kitty cat. Stay right here. Turn around. Say hey, YouTube. What's your mate sis doing? Well, this isn't the only culprit. There's another one right over here within yardstick distance of me. So, that's the background chatter that you hear. Right? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get this accomplished and then we'll come back. Okay. So I'm back and I figured out what seems to be about the best way for my situation of handling this as far as putting the grommets in. So I've already got my area marked off. Four inches from the edge, three quarters of an inch down, and I have my lines intersecting right here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is right there in that point, I'm going to stick my seam ripper in so it goes through all the layers. And I'm just going to Make small little cuts, just big enough to fit one of my grommets in. The ones I'm using have a 7 16 inch hole, so it doesn't take very much. And I'm going all four directions, just opening up a small little slit. I'll get as close as I can here. See if I can get the light turned over here and you can see a little better. 
but this is all I'm looking for. And I'll show you how to insert the grommets. Okay, so when you're doing your grommets, you're going to have what's called the eyelet, a washer, and then the tools that you use to install them are the anvil, and it's just called a tool. <laughs> From everything I've seen, it's just called a tool. So what you'll do is you'll set your anvil down on your countertop. I would demonstrate here, but this is just a picnic table and I can't really beat on it the way I need to. So you have your anvil and if you look the washers that I'm, or the grommet that I'm using this has a thick edge to it and this kind of has teeth to it if you can make those out. You want this piece to be on the right side of your fabric. So you'll have your anvil, you'll have the tall piece, you'll put your fabric right side down onto this so that the hole that you just made will slip right over this. Then you put the washer on and it'll just slide over and it all sit together. Then you use your tool place it on top and strike it with the hammer and you can kind of feel it going down and when it feels really solid then your grommet is set and I'll show you what that looks like because I've already done the other side matter of fact I've already installed the handle on this side so this outer piece is the wide washer sitting in the hole like so and then on the inside is the portion that has the teeth like so and you're kind of doing this inside out so I'll see if I can set this up so you can have a good visual so the thick part goes through the part you want showing. And then this will go on this side. Now if you see, there's quite a bit sticking out on the back side. So what I'm going to do, i got the anvil right here. It goes on the front side. And the tool sits right here. So what I'm going to do is walk over to my countertop where I can actually do this. And you'll hear me banging on it. And then I'll come right back and show you what it looks like. And all of that noise produced this. A nice solid seated grommet. And then all you have to do from here is the rings on these handles. If you look closely, you can see where they're slit right here. Don't pull them apart, but any way you can, pliers. I use two screwdrivers in opposite directions and you want to separate them sideways on that split put the ring through the grommet and then push them back into place as close as possible the only reason I say don't spread it is by the time you get it spread open enough to actually fit on the grommet you're going to it's going to be really hard to get it back to where it needs to be 
and by the time you get it there it probably won't close enough and you take a chance of later on the handle actually pulling apart so I'm going to go ahead and install this other grommet where the hole I've already made and put the handle on and then I'll show you the final product so be right back okay so here's the final product I have all the grommets handles are attached we have the three pockets um, and it's big enough to stash a small body in this is a 13 year old Eeyore and you can see how large it is compared to a 13 year old Eeyore <coughs> Okay, so this is the final product. If you end up making one or making something similar or just want to yell, fuss, complain, rant, or congratulate on anything on this project, leave it in the comment section down below. Um, other than that, special thanks to Eeyore for modeling. <laughs> special thanks to Critter for being Critter. And she did pick up all the strings that we trimmed off of this. Eeyore trimmed off of this. Okay, so you want to tell everybody bye? Bye. Bye y'all.